This is Father Bob Warren of the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement. Thank you for listening to this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour radio show. The Friars' popular Ave Maria Hour was first brought to the radio airwaves in 1939, recorded in New York City and on the mountainside grounds at Graymore, a home in Garrison, New York. These timeless classic stories of the Bible and the lives of the saints came to life each week through dramatic reenactment by professional actors and actresses. You know, friends, Christ once said, do not hide your treasure under a bushel. In saying this, he meant share your gifts, share your talents. The Friars of the Atonement feel the message in these broadcasts remains as powerful and timely as when they were originally aired, and we are so happy to be able to share them with you today. To learn more about the missions and ministries of the Friars of the Atonement, I invite you to visit our website, www.atonementfriars.org. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour. Jane of St. Erasmus. In the year 1593 in a town in Holland. The priest had finished the services and was preparing to leave the church when he saw a determined-looking woman marching down the aisle toward him. From her stride and set of her jaw, he knew trouble was approaching. So, as was his custom, he met it with a smile and cheerful voice. Ah, good morning, Madam Scheldt. I'm so happy you could attend Holy Mass. Did you find the short sermon on prayer helpful? Father, I didn't wait until everyone was gone to discuss your sermon, but for another reason. And what is that? The bans posted this morning, this marriage to Jane and this, this man, this Erasmus of Scheinke. Oh, yes, the bans. I'm glad Jane has decided to marry. She's uh, 28, you know. You must not marry them. Well, Madam Shell, do you know of any reason why I shouldn't marry them? The man's not worthy of her. Jane comes from a distinguished family. She's a model Christian woman, and... Oh, but Erasmus' family is also distinguished, and he holds a high rank in the Spanish army. He's vain, overly ambitious, quarrelsome, hot-tempered, and interested only in himself. Yes, I realize much of what you say is true, And but... to make matters worse, he gambles. These uh, faults are not insurmountable obstacles to marriage. Perhaps the absence of marriage is somewhat responsible for them. When marriage takes place, a man's attitude usually changes. Never having married, I couldn't speak with authority on that. But if you believe Jane will reform him, you're mistaken. Didn't you say that a man's attitude changes with marriage? Yes, of course. Then a a woman's attitude can change, too. Of course. Just my point. Instead of him becoming more virtuous, she'll be influenced by his vices. He'll drag her down to his level. Uh, Madam... Do you think she'll take up gambling after her marriage? Well, well, I won't go so far as to say that, but... I know her too well. She's devout. She relies on prayer to help her. Then you'll not forbid this marriage? I have no grounds, unless you have and can prove them. Otherwise, I'll have to perform the marriage. After what I've told you? After you admit it, most of what I said was true. You've only told me about his faults, and they're not insurmountable. But just the same. After the bans have remained the usual time, if there are no objections, I shall perform the ceremony. Well, good morning, Father. But mark my words, no good will come of it. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, 
For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, until death do us part. In sickness and in health, until death do us part. Join you together in marriage in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jane! Jane! One moment, Erasmus. Come here, see what I've brought you. Oh, I'm sorry, Erasmus. I was at prayer. <laughs> Good, then I'm sure your prayers were answered. Look. It's money. Of course it's money. A hundred and ten are golden. Fortune was with me tonight. I've come to show you my winnings. Well, what's wrong, my dear? You look as though you disapprove. Oh, come, come, Jane. A smile. It, it's not that you gamble. That's only part of it. But it leads to quarreling. Twice this month I've had to intervene. Well, that captain is a poor loser. Sending his wife to you to plead for his money back. No, no, that's not true. I could tell from the way she spoke that her husband would be furious with her for coming. Well, it's settled. You asked me to return his money, and I did. Well, I'm just as glad. The word got around, and now the captain's not accepted at the gaming table. But we don't need the money. Well, we could always use it. Here, this money is for you, Jay. Take it. All right. I'll use it for the poor. And I it. want you to go to the milliner, the finest in town, and have a dress made, too. A dress? Oh, no, Erasmus, I don't need a dress at this time. Ah, but you will. Next month, the Duke of Alba is visiting the troops. He'll give a ball, and the officers and their wives will attend. I have a very suitable dress, almost new. No, 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 it won't do. I want you to outshine every woman at the ball. I want the Duke to be impressed. Oh, Erasmus, is it so necessary I make an impression? For me, Jane. It'll help me in my career. I want these Spaniards to know a Dutchman is just as acceptable in high social circles as they are. I heard some of the ladies laughing the other day at the way our women dress. They're so vain and empty-headed. Always trying to outdo each other in garments. Jane, I want to get ahead. I want to go to the very top. And I need your help. I'm trying to help. Haven't I always received your guests? and return parties and dinners? Yes, my dear. No, 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 I have no complaint. To be sure you spend a great deal of time in prayer and charity work. Surely you don't begrudge me that. No, Jay, not at all. Still, well, you might use some time to better advantage. What do you wish me to do? Well, a certain amount of charity is good. It creates goodwill among the poor, but the poor don't have much influence uh, where it counts. Our Lord said to give to the poor. Yes, yes, but he also said that the poor are always with us. So you see, my dear, the problem of feeding them is endless. Perhaps the Lord leaves the poor always with us to remind us of our duty to them and our need for him. <laughs> and no more of this. You always best me in a religious discussion. Now, about the ball. You will promise me to appear at your best? Yes, Erasmus. <laughs> The maids kindled a fire for us. Oh, Jane. Jane, you were splendid. The Duke of Alba was impressed. Because he danced with me once? Because he danced with you at all. That meant that every last officer would have offended him if they didn't ask you for a dance. Oh, my. All along, I thought it was because of my grace and skill. The point is, the Duke asked me to join him in a game of cards. And I lost only 50 gulden. Well, I don't understand. You always like to win. My dear, one never wins when playing with a superior officer. Yes, I see a promotion when the next list is out. Well, 50 gulden is little to pay, and I'll win it back by morning. By morning? Oh, Rasmus, you're not going back. Yes, Jane, we made arrangements to have a game after the Duke retired. That is, those of us who um, managed to lose to him. Oh, I was wishing... Hmm? What were you wishing? Not now. I I'll tell you someday. Then I'll go back. They're waiting for me to begin the game. Good night, Jane. Good night, Erasmus. Good 
Dear God, I don't approve of his gambling and his vanity, but I don't want him to change just because I want it. Wouldn't it be better if he would change because he himself comes to realize his faults? He's good. He's remained true to the faith, even though much of Holland has turned from it. But I do pray for your help that his vanity may change to humility, that his ambition may be for your sake and not for his own glory. Help him to see what... Jane... Jane! Father, what is it? Is Erasmus here? Oh, no, Father. He just left. Oh, I was afraid of that. Father, what's wrong? You must tell me. Erasmus was gambling tonight. A Captain Gomez lost heavily and accused your husband of cheating. Well, you must be mistaken. Erasmus told me he was playing with the Duke of Alba and lost to him. The Duke left the game very early. This happened later. Erasmus struck the Captain and challenged him to a duel. Oh. Then we must find him at once. Well, now, there's only two places to go. I'm afraid if I go to one, they may be at the other. What places? One is the glade back at the cemetery. The other is that ruin by the river. I'll go to the ruin. It's closer. You go to the river. Oh. Fool, you're no better with a sword than you are with cards. Good, lay on. You'll soon tire, and then I'll run you through. Stop it. Stop it. Ah, good try, but still a miss. Now I'll show you a Dutchman knows how to use a sword. Harass me, stop. Jane, get back. I ask you, in the name of God, put down your sword. Get away, Jane. Don't stand between us. Pick up your sword, Captain. Why must you kill this man? Why, Erasmus? You accused me of cheating. But you didn't cheat, did you? Of course not. You know that. I know it. And so does everyone who knows you. You don't have to kill him to prove it. Jane, your hand, it's bleeding. It's not serious. I did it when I grabbed your sword. A bandage, quick. Here, let me see it. Oh, Jane, Jane, you are foolish to step between us. You could have been killed. Erasmus, I believe I'd rather die than see you kill a man because of a game of cards. The cut is deep. Come, I'll take you home. One of you men find the doctor. Is something troubling you? No, no, nothing. Your promotion came through today. And yet at supper you sat very quiet. Let me see your hand. Mm. Yes, it healed. But you'll always carry a scar. It's not noticeable. But tell me, when will you be commissioned? Well, now that I'm promoted, it's not as important as I thought it would be. Your hands, Jane. They've been lifted many times in prayer for me. Yes, I do pray for you. I've never forgotten what you said that night of the duel. That you would rather die than see me kill a man because of a game of cards. Is that why you've stopped gambling? Captain Gomez and I will always love you for stopping the duel. No, Erasmus. Love God. He's the one who helped me. Jane, I've been thinking... I know what a lot of my friends said, that it, it was a great mistake for you to marry me. Oh, my friends were generous with their advice, too. You have no regrets? None. At 28, a woman knows her mind and heart. Well, I know I've often disappointed you. I've not been a comfort to you. But I do want to make amends. There's nothing you Jane, have to do. would you think it strange, after what I've just said... If I told you I wanted to leave you for a long time, a, a year, perhaps? Leave me alone? I don't understand. Well, I would like to go on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Erasmus, do you really mean it? There comes a time for every man, I suppose, when he has to know whether his faith is a part of him, inseparable... Or is a sword to be seized in time of danger and then sheathed when the danger is past? Well, then go. Go to the Holy Land and walk the way of the cross. Kneel at the place where Jesus was scourged, where he fell, where he was crucified and put in the tomb. Why, Jane, 
You're so happy, and and I was wondering how to break the news to you. I'll miss you, yes, Erasmus. But this is the answer to my prayers, that someday you would seek God. Father, when this this impulse, for that's what it was, first came, Erasmus had been gone about three months. I, I put it out of my mind, telling myself it was just a thought. Yes, I remember. You told me that I shouldn't even think of entering a convent, that my place was with Erasmus. And you agreed? Has anything occurred to change your mind? I've prayed for guidance. And each time I hear a voice distinctly saying, You shall become a Franciscan. You shall enter a convent. That sounds more like a prediction than a command to act. Yes. I've tested myself in every way I know. It's not something I dream. The voice comes when I'm most aware of God, when I'm at prayer. I'm firmly convinced it's a call from God, that it's his will. But you must wait until Erasmus returns. When do you expect him? Within a month. Oh, how can I make him understand what's happened to me? What can I do if he refuses? Unless he gives his permission, you couldn't enter the convent. And if it be God's will, you do become a nun. Nothing on earth can prevent it. Jane, Jane, what are you talking about? I go on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land knowing how unworthy I am to be your husband. I return with the determination with God's help to make up for all the unhappiness I've caused you. And now you want to leave me forever. I I don't understand what's come over you. Why you didn't run to meet me when I came down the lane. I held out my arms and you just stood there transfixed. I was asking myself a question for the last time. What were you asking yourself? Am I to be a nun? And at that moment, I knew it was the truth. But when you did greet me, it... I know. I greeted you more as a mother would greet a son. But I rediscovered my faith and learned the true meaning of love between man and woman. Perhaps this discovery came too late. And while I was away, you found you didn't care for me. In all truth, I've never loved you so much as at this moment. As I love you. Oh, I know now it was your goodness, your charity, and your prayers that drove me to the Holy Land. Even as a voice calls me to the convent. But now that we know the true meaning of love, why must we sacrifice it? Christianity and sacrifice are inseparable. Now go to the priest. He'll tell you where your duty lies. My son, not only have I talked to Jane many times, but I have taken her problem to the Archbishop of Cumbrae. Father, she had wanted this when I did all those horrible things. I would have consented. But now that she's shown me the way of truth, isn't it right we should be together? Doesn't she have a duty to her husband? Her first duty, as is yours, is to God. Then you believe in her call? I've come to the conclusion that it is real. I can always refuse my permission. Yes, but will you? Father, is it selfish of me to want her always by my side? You wish Jane to have peace of soul above all else. Well, then the question is... Where can she find it? Good day, Father. Erasmus, what's happened? Why are all these trunks here? Well, I've packed for you. Carriage is waiting. But why? I, I... To take you to the convent. Erasmus, you've consented. Yes. Oh, my dear, saintly Erasmus, sit down and listen to me. First, 
I'll take nothing with me to the convent. And second, I must make arrangements to be admitted. Oh. Well, surely you know which convent you intend to enter. Oh, yes, the St. Clair at Philippeville. But I couldn't apply until I had your consent. I'll make application at once. This is as far as your husband can go. You may have a moment to yourselves to say goodbye. You will please be brief. Shall I ever see you again? It may be a long time. Jane, the life of a novice is harsh. Promise me, if it's more than you can stand, that you'll leave. Yes, Sir Erasmus, I can promise that. She's coming. We must say goodbye. God bless you, Erasmus. I pledge you the best of my merits. Goodbye, Jane. Pray for me. Then all will be well. You must leave her now. Jane, you will follow me to the Sister of Novices. Jane. Yes, Mother. You realize, of course, that no special consideration can be given you because of your age. That all novices must be treated alike? Yes, of course, Mother. You will go barefoot, as do the others. You will scrub floors, wash clothing, and perform many other lowly duties. I understand, Mother. I tell you this in advance so that you may withdraw your application if you so wish. No, Mother, I believe I'm here because God wills it. If so, then his will be done. Now, what name do you wish... Jane of St. Erasmus. St. Erasmus. You mean the 4th century saint, also known as St. Elmo, patron of sailors? No, Mother. I mean Erasmus, my husband. But he's not a saint. He released me at great personal sacrifice to himself. His act was saintly. And in appreciation, I would like to be called Jane of St. Erasmus. So shall the name be entered in the Book of Novices. You wish to see me, Mother? Yes. The novice mistress reports that your conduct is beyond criticism, except in one particular. Frequently you break into tears for no apparent reason. Why is this? It's something I can't control. Whenever I glance at the picture of Christ at the pillar and the whip falling on him, I'm compelled to tears. Then I must forbid you to look upon the picture. Whenever you pass it, you may make the sign of the cross, but you will lower your eyes to the floor. Lest you be tempted, remember that obedience is greater than sentiments of devotion. Yes, Mother. Nineteen years after entering the convent, and after a life of perfection, Jane of St. Erasmus lay dying. For several years she was in great pain, and the crucifix was her comfort. And to it, she would say a prayer. What do you wish, my daughter? Crucifix. Here. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, may this victorious title protect us and preserve us from all evil. These were her last words. She was making the sign of the cross when she died at the age of 74. In every situation she sought by means of prayer to get help from heaven. And many have followed her example. 
Jane of St. Erasmus, is remembered in this prayer of the Church. Lord Jesus Christ, who in the Garden of Olives has taught us by word and example to pray in order that we may overcome the dangers of temptation, grant us the grace that we may always be devoted to prayer and may merit its abundant fruits. Who livest and reignest forever and ever. Amen. Amen.